Um, so how, how does uh, parenting develop? I mean, our beliefs about this, our mental models about uh, parenting will be really important in terms of understanding um, how we approach parents and how we approach uh, parenting. Um, to overgeneralise fairly majorly, but just to make the point, there isn't that much in parenting now that is purely instinctive. There's not that much in human parenting that's instinctive. Unlike what, if you've ever watched a cat raise kittens, you'll know that really almost from the beginning, I mean, there can be some cats who are good, better at parenting than others, but generally from the beginning, they kind of know what to do. But in human parenting, it's become a much more cultural process. It's become much more flexible and fluid, much more changeable, and much more something that is actually learned and transmitted through culture than, than simply hardwired in. I'm not saying there are no instinctive basis to parenting, but they're becoming kind of weaker and weaker. All right? Less and less important. Your instincts don't tell you how much time your three-year-old should have on the iPad. All right? They, they, they just don't, right? We, because of the, our culture and the way we live and the complexity of our societies, our parenting has had to become much more responsive, changeable, and much less linked uh, purely to instinct. And so that's why we have that experience of when we become a parent of that, have you had that profound experience of just feeling totally unprepared, right? Having that baby in your hands and then going, you know what, you've given this baby to the wrong person. I am not up to this. You know, I'm not mature enough. You know, that's the experience that we all have. That's what it's like. We do not feel prepared. From day one, we start a learning journey. All right. Uh, what's also true is that our parenting is, the way we parent, is passed on through the generations. All right. So there's certain aspects of the way we parent that you'll see being passed on. All right. Now, the thing about this is that the most impactful experiences are negative. So when children have been exposed to very averse, negative or uh, neglectful um, situations, like if they've been raised in an orphanage or in, if they've been institutionalised or they've experienced significant abuse or neglect, they're much more likely to have their own parenting impacted by that. But just because you've experienced that doesn't make you, it doesn't ensure that you'll go on to be abusive or neglectful. It's true that about 70% of all um, parents who are notified or substantiated around um, neglecting or abusing their children, if you look at them, about 70% will have experienced a, a neglect and abuse in their own childhood. But only 30%, estimates say about 30% of children who are neglected and abused will go on to neglect or abuse their children. So even though your parenting experience as, as an as a, as a, as a individual is important, it actually does not determine how you're going to parent. It doesn't determine it. It's an influence, but it doesn't determine it. There'll be a moment when your mother's mouth or your father's mouth will come out of your own before you can stop it, right? We'll all have that experience, but you'll also better think about lots of ways in which your own parenting is different from that of your parents. And this is important for human beings because our society is changing all the time, and so our parenting changes all the time. And already, and you, so you can see that, you just have to look at images of parenting from not that long ago to, to go, well, hang on, we don't do it like that anymore. That would be an enormative picture in the 50s. Nobody would have batted an eyelid, all right? But now we are in a different place. Not all of us, but a lot of us, many of us. Um, uh, similarly, picture, you know, pictures like this also convey just how significantly things have changed. That also is an image that kind of would not reson resonate with us, or hopefully, or we wish it didn't, or something. All right. I think parenting is much more learned on the job than what we've sort of thought about before. That you learn parenting through the experience of parenting. That you can't learn parenting by studying it, by researching it, by reading tip sheets, and reading books. That'd be like trying to learn to ride a bike by watching videos or reading. You get to learn to ride a bike by getting on it, by through the experience, through the corrective experience of learning on the job, you begin to experience what it's like to parent, and your experience trains you as you parent. This has really important implications, because what it means is that parents are learners. It means that constantly, they don't, they're not, they don't, it's not that they start and have it, it's not that you come with it, it's not that you're born with it, it's you develop it, and you develop it on the job. In fact, that's why I often think that that idea of a confident parent is a bit of a misnomer. 
You know what they say about the one person in the room who's not panicking? It's probably because they don't get the issue. And that's a bit like parenting. If you're really paying attention as a parent, your natural state tends to be a little unsure. It tends to be a little unsure. And that's because you're constantly being exposed to new things and new challenges and new things that you hadn't had to deal with. Like, you know, one minute you're trying to get your kids to eat the vegetables and then the next minute you're trying to get them to bring the car home in one piece. And all the way in between those things, you've constantly had to adjust and adapt to new things that your parenting is putting out in front of you. So children, in, so children are, in fact, are the best teachers. Parents are, in fact, learners. Thinking of ourselves as learners, as basically being unsure as the normal, rather than as being the given, puts us and puts parents in a much better place. Because if you think about yourself as a learner, then you naturally tend to be less hard on yourself when things go wrong. You expect to make mistakes and you expect to, to be on a learning journey. But if you think you've either got it or you haven't, when you make mistakes, what does that tell you about yourself? That you're a bad parent. All right? So this kind of learning modality becomes really uh, very important in relation to kind of the way we think about and understand parents. Obviously, it opens the door for parenting support because if you are a learner, then you will benefit from opportunities to learn. But it also tells us is that the most fundamental learning going on is, uh, is going on, on on the job. All right, um, and just finally, just something about the social and psychological context of parenting because I think our helping efforts are really affected by what parents experience today in our society. Because at one level, what we have is a situation where parenting is kind of idealised. You know, you'll see the great ads, you know, for margarine with the, you know, beautifully dressed mum and her well-behaved children and everything is great. Or, you know, you'll see the, the, the magazines with the wonderful, beautiful families on the front and there's this kind of idealisation of parents. And it doesn't really equate with what parents experience day to day. You know, most parents will feel a little like this. They'll feel under pressure, just given the nature of their job, what they're doing, but also what they do is they feel under pressure because of the way society treats them. And what is typical, I'd be really interested to hear about whether you think this is true in Ireland, is that Northern Ireland, is that parents are exposed to high levels of scrutiny and blame. Like never before, I reckon, now is the most time when parents are exposed to criticism. Like if you look at the media, you only, you know, almost every second day there'll be some story about hopeless parents and hopeless parenting. All right? Things like this. Parents are failing their children. In this story, this, this um, story, which I'm hoping is a misquote, but that story says one in five individuals are not fit to be parents. One in five. Like, look at that. One, two, three, four, bzzz. One, two, three, four, bzzz. Like, really? One in five. It's just nonsense. All right? And there it is out in the public media. And then we have all sorts of criticisms of parents. We've got the helicopter, the lawnmower, the hyper parent, the paranoid parent, etc., etc. the snowplow parent. Have you ever heard of that? That might be Aussie. You know what a snowplow parent is? <laughs> is that like skiing? Yeah. So what the snowplow parent apparently does is like, you know, um, get all of the frustrations out of the, the way of the child so the child never feels frustrated. All right? Now, the thing about all these things is that there will be some, well, often there'll be some little, you know what, a, by the way, a hyper parent is? A hyper parent is somebody who is so busily getting their children engaged in activities, they're rushing them around to activities. So they've got the kids over scheduled, that's the story. But when you look at this, is that these are often ways of categorising kind of almost all parents. And I wouldn't say that there aren't parents who have issues like this. But the way it's, it, it happens in society is we tend to sort of say this is going, all parents are like this. All parents are blamed like this. Parents today, you'll hear somebody say, do this. Parents today will do this or that. And it turns out that that's purely anecdotal. It turns out it's not based in evidence. It turns out that when you look at the evidence, all the signs say that parenting is in fact getting better, not getting worse. But what the media suggests is that it's always getting worse. So PJ O'Rourke ends up saying something like this, everybody knows how to raise children except the people who have them. That's how it's beginning to feel, or this uh, journalist. 
I recently heard about a survey of professional journals that managed to find 72 different conditions attributable to bad mothering. Didn't you know we mothers have been found to cause everything from eczema to bedwetting to schizophrenia? I'm thinking of going back to bed before I do any more damage. So, like, this is a reaction to this sort of blaming, very um, poorly nuanced blaming going on. And the sort of discussion around parenting has just boomed. Have you ever heard of Ngram? Ngram is a Google service, and what they've done is they've scanned millions of books, right? And they've got books that date back to the 1800s. Uh, what have I got here? Early 1900s. And uh, you can look for the frequency of a word published in all of these books, all right? And this is the frequency of the word parent. So you can see that it's been pretty consistent, slight increase in later years. Here's the word parenting. Look at that. So from about, oh, look, from about sort of mid-60s, is that when Spock was around? We've had a boom of discussion about parenting, an absolute boom, all right? So now parents are parenting in a context where there's enormous amounts of information, enormous amounts of talk and discussion going on. Information is overwhelming. If you put parenting into Google, you'll find you'll get 280 million hits, which is a lot of reading to do if you're, you know, if you're a conscientious parent, it's a lot, of, a lot of material. And of course, a lot of that material is very unhelpful. It's not, a lot of the material can be misguiding and uh, difficult. So parents are having to not only deal with overwhelming amounts of information, but they've also got to deal with uh, what's right. What should I be paying attention to? What should I be um, thinking about? And psychologically, I just want to make this point, and then we'll, we'll um, stop and we'll get you to have a, a talk at your table there. Um, I think it's very easy to under, uh, underestimate the vulnerability of parents as individuals. And I happen to think that human parents are the most vulnerable individuals around. Um, and that's why I've got this slide up. You might be wondering, why is there an elephant up there? But I, I was trying to depict vulnerability. And I think those people feel a little threatened. And it's, parents experience this because right from the very beginning, right from the moment they have their baby, they become affected by the reality that now their personal equilibrium, their well-being, their very existence is now being determined in a fundamental way by somebody else. All right? That now there's this little person in my life and their well-being now becomes utterly critical to my well-being. All right? And very quickly, having got there, very quickly on top of that is parents begin to build their self-esteem around themselves as a parent. So it's very hard to think well of yourself if you think that you're a bad parent. So now you've got two kinds of significant vulnerabilities. One is a threat to my child's well-being is a threat to me, and a threat to my sense of being a good parent is also a significant threat to me, and I'm vulnerable to both of those threats. And then what that gives rise to is the fight-flight response. All right, the fight, the fight-flight response. You know what the fight, fight response is? Just for those who don't, very quickly, it's the way the body organises itself to deal with a threat. So when, as human beings, when we're faced with a threat, what happens is, is that physiologically and mentally we get prepared to do one of two things, either fight the, fight the threat or run away, all right? Fight or run away. And sometimes when we're experiencing difficulties with parents, what we're doing is we're triggering the fight-flight response. One of these dogs is a parent support worker. Which one do you think it is? Well, the answer is it depends. But often emotionally and psychologically for the parent, what they're facing is they're not facing a lovely person sitting in front of them, you know, who's obviously caring and interested. They're facing a significant threat. The threat is a double bind kind of threat. The implication could be that there's something wrong with your child. And if there's not something wrong with your child, what is it? What's the other threat? Something wrong with you. All right? And that will shape the interaction. All right? And that's why we'll sometimes have parents behaving in either a defensive or an aggressive way to attempt to support them because what they're experiencing is that intense vulnerability of there being something wrong with my child or something wrong with me and therefore needing to do fight or flight, either out the door, it'll be all right, she'll grow out of it, you know, we'll be fine, or fight, you know, what would you know? Are you a parent? How, how do you know what you're talking about? That kind of stuff. 
And some of that comes from that kind of uh, basic and fundamental uh, sense of, um, of vulnerability and threat.